Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to this low light and detail comparison video. Now I've done these in the past. I've never really talked and I'm usually just show uh, the information and put it up and let you guys look at it and decide for yourself. But a lot of people are asking for me to do like a commentary or my take on it. So that's what I'm going to do here. So we have four cameras. Two of them are brand new cameras that just came out. We have the 5D Mark IV, and we're looking at the 4K. The Fujifilm X-T2, which uh, also shoots 4K. It's uh, their first 4K camera. We have the GX85 Panasonic, so similar to the GH4, same colors, same detail, slightly better than low light than the GH4, uh, but very similar uh, with the, the in-body image stabilization. And of course, we have the A6300, which is a camera that I love and I also kind of hate at the same time. Uh, it's, uh, it's tough, but it's a great camera, great image. So uh, we're going to start off by looking at uh, some of these shots here. And uh, so this is from the Fuji film right here, 4K. This is the frame that I'm, uh, that I'm working on for the detail. Uh, so here we have uh, the Canon is next. We have the Canon shot here. It's a cooler white balance. And here we have the Sony. So these are all standard picture profiles, auto white balance. Uh, and then we have the Panasonic and the colors look very similar actually um, to the Sony. So now we're going to go into uh, the comparisons here. So uh, I want to mention that um, the, all these lenses are nice and sharp. Uh, you guys can check the video description for the links. And it's all at f2.8. The 5D Mark IV and a6300 is using the same exact lens. It's a Sigma 18 to 35 at f2.8. So here's a 200x crop. You guys see the, the X-T2 is a little bit too contrasty. Uh, if you look, the 5D Mark IV looks blurry. It literally looks bl blurry. It's not. I triple check the focus on all these cameras. Compared to the a6300, same lens, same settings. It just, there's so much less detail. I mean, I don't know what it is. Even comparing it to uh, the Panasonic, if you look at the Panasonic, it has more uh, detail. I, I, have fr I froze this frame here. The Panasonic's Micro Four Thirds sensor, that's cropped even more so, is more detailed in 4K uh, than the 5D Mark IV. And another interesting thing is, um, these are both one-to-one -one pixel readouts, right? Uh, all three of these cameras, the cheaper cameras, the A6300 is a thousand bucks, X-T2 is I believe 1700, 800 bucks for the Panasonic. Um, they're all using 100 megabits per second, so it's quite compressed for 4K. The Canon is at 500 megabits per second, five times larger file size. You'd think it wouldn't kill off any details. Uh, but it, it's, it doesn't look great at all. Um, and I'm not trying to hate on Canon. I'm just, I'm really surprised. I figured one-to-one -one readout, just like Panasonic's been doing, it should get a nice detailed image, and then you're not having the really high compression of the MP4 files. But in reality, it, it looks a lot less detailed um, than, than the other images. And it's not just that it does, doesn't have enough sharpening, just the detail isn't there. You look at the A6300, it almost looks over sharpened. It's not. Uh, the camera doesn't over sharpen, at least by my opinion, it doesn't over sharpen uh, from the factory settings like the NX1 did. The Fuji image looks great too. Uh, a little bit less detailed, a little bit over contrast, too much contrast, but it looks great. And I'm going to play this for you guys again. And uh, you look at the Sony, you actually see, I don't know if it's birds or bugs, but uh, in the center of the frame slightly to the right, there's either birds or, or bugs flying around. And you see them moving around, going up, going down. And I was kind of like, whoa, what was that when I saw that at first? And then you look at the Canon, you basically don't even see it. And maybe by the time these videos are compressed even more on YouTube, you might not even notice that there. Where uh, the Sony, you're getting all that detail. And then you get a lot more detail on the inside of the building. So um, very, very interesting. And I, I was not expecting this whatsoever. Um, five times larger file size, uh, three and a half times higher price than the a6300 and the details uh, are just smeared um, I, I really don't know what's going on there but uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, low light here so uh, same thing we're shooting at f2.8 um, so this is the a6300 this is what I used my exposure off of this is what my eyes saw a6300 1600 ISO 2.8 aperture so here's our Canon shot and then 
we're going to go to our Fuji shot right here. And then we're going to move over and see our Panasonic shot. There's our Panasonic shot. So those are 1600. Now let's check them out side by side. Okay, so first off, side by side, the A6300 is extremely clean. Uh, the 5D looks to have similar noise as the Panasonic Micro Four Third sensor. And the X-T1 has just a better white balance, more true to life, and also a similar noise. So at 3200, we're looking here. Um, honestly, I think the 5D Mark IV uh, is the worst. It, it has the most visible noise. It does have a little more detail than the Panasonic, but a lot more noise is visible. And uh, if you look at the little, uh, the little stand there with the, the flag, you see all that noise is going crazy compared to the other two. And then you look at the A6300, it's looking much better um, than all the cameras. So we're at 6400 now. Uh, same thing. I think, I don't know, the A6300 is getting worse, but it still looks good. And let's switch over to 12,800 ISO. Um, the Panasonic can't do that. The A6300 looks usable still if you need it. It still looks usable, but the 5D Mark IV and the Fuji are not usable, and the 6 to 300 doesn't even go there. So, um, I don't know. I'm, I knew the camera wouldn't do great in low light. Um, you know, you're getting Panasonic uh, that is beating it in, in some ISOs, beating the 5D Mark IV. Uh, Fuji looks, looks similar, maybe a little bit better. Um, the Fuji has more contrast um, that I think if you brought that up would help out a little bit. Um, the A6300, uh, it's brighter image, it looks more true to life, it's more detailed, and it has less noise uh, than the 6400. And honestly, I think um, at 6400 it looks better than the 5D at 3200. Um, yeah, I mean, it does. It definitely does. So I say the, the 5D Mark IV really looks only usable up to 1600. Even then, it's, it has similar noise probably to a GH4 at, at 1600. Um, and a lot of people don't like the GH4. I personally stopped using the GH4 because the light wasn't good enough for wedding, uh, some dimmer wedding ceremonies and receptions and stuff like that. So... Um, it, it's only clean up to about 800, and even then you, you do see some noise. So um, I'm quite disappointed. Once again, you have five times the file size, three and a half times uh, the price of the A6300, um, more so than the GX85, maybe twice the price, a little bit more than the X-T2. And you think with more data, uh, you'd have less compression and maybe more fine noise, but not smearing and stuff. But the E6300 shows fine noise, which look more film grain-like instead of these big blotchy, um, big blotchy noise that the 5D Mark, show, my, Mark IV shows. So um, anyways, so hopefully this test was interesting to you guys, and hopefully my commentary helped. Of course, let me know what you guys think if you see something different than I do. Um, on the video examples and the test, uh, let me know. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more testing. I'm going to have a full review on this camera and more comparisons with the A6300. Um, I guess I want to say some positives about the 5D Mark IV. I love the screen on the back of it. The video autofocusing uh, works well, and uh, it's nice in the hand if you're if you're using on a monopod, tripod. Um, the battery life is good. It's not, as far as it being a camera, it's a great camera, especially for stills. Uh, but I'm really disappointed in the 4K video. It's almost like uh, Canon's like, you guys have been asking for it for years. Fine, we'll give it to you, but we're going to limit you in this way and this way. We're going to give you a format that takes tons of space and doesn't do as good of a job. And <laughs> we're not going to give you 4K out on the HDMI. Uh, we're going to crop in more than a crop sensor. Um, so yeah, anyways, I'll be doing more testing. I'll do a full review for you guys. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.